Hello, I'm Derek Matthews and welcome to Anne Arundel United Real Talk. In this episode, we will get an update on a few activities from Anne Arundel United making headlines this week. We had an incredible weekend of activities discussing the Choice of Power program up at Fresh Start Church in Glen Burnie, where graduates of this year's 2018 class got an opportunity to talk about the importance of power of choice. We sat down with experts regarding financial literacy, sex trafficking, human trafficking, and those signs associated with it, and many other issues facing our youth today. Yours truly was able to actually address a group of parents to sit down and talk to these parents in a panel setting on better communicating and setting boundaries for the young people and foundations for healthy relationships. Congrats to all the graduating seniors of all schools of Anne Arundel County. And a special shout out this week to the son of Taiwan Thompson, one of our premier partners here with the Youth Empowerment Program. His son graduated from Glen Burnie High School. He played running back on the varsity football team for three years. On his second game of his senior season, Tyreen tore his ACL and his meniscus. While it ended his football season that year, it didn't end his dream. Thanks to Coach Eric Woodson and Coach Derek Mason, Tyreen will still be playing football at Minnesota West Community College in the fall. Coach Woodson, Coach Mason have been there for over 14 years coaching young men into college. Coaches, keep up the good work. We appreciate what you're doing. Well, let's take a look at a couple of uplifting stories here in Anne Arundel County. We had the seniors graduating. What an incredible time of year to watch these seniors walk. And again, Tyreen Thompson, congrats. We had an active shooter program we did with Anne Arundel Leadership Academy Leadership Anne Arundel up at the community college. We had a great panel discussing the active shooter and all associated with the active shooter push that we're seeing across the country. Then of course we had the power of belief up at the uh, church with Bishop Craig Coates and we thank them for opening their doors to allow such a great thing to happen with the kids. If you are a current police officer looking to step up your game and wear the blue Starting May 23rd, we've kicked off until June 15th, the Anne Arundel County Police Department's lateral hiring. If you believe that you have what it takes to come join the best of the men and women in blue, come join our team. You can become an officer with the Anne Arundel County Police Department. We are hiring right now. There are so many options for your career path. K-9, SWAT, criminal investigation, narcotics, patrol, aviation. We need dedicated professionals to join our team. There is a limited window to apply, so don't wait. Your community needs you. Anne Arundel County Police, it's more than just a job. I love our ladies and gentlemen in blue. If you wanna hear more and talk about this lateral process, reach out to our recruiters at 410-222 8677. Folks, we're going to take a quick break, but when we return, we will be back with Terrence Brownlee, who has a great vision of youth doing some great things. Take a look at our community calendar for events happening around town here in Anne Arundel County. We'll be right back. I came from five generations of teachers. Losing my job was the bottom falling out of my world. And welcome back. We're here with Terrence Brownlee from the Phoenix Center. 
Terrence, man, it's always a pleasure to see you, champ. It's a pleasure. Boy, you looking good, man. Thank you. Like I said, man, you looking look like you straight out of the NFL combine. <laughs> I wish, man. man. And I we wish. could use you here in DC uh, too. No, nah, I'm a Cowboys fan. You're cow- oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna yeah. do another show uh. on that one. I'm gonna leave that one right there, <laughs> champ. But uh, look, before we talk about what you're doing over at the Phoenix Center with the kids, man, which I think is awesome, um, tell the folks who you are, man. Who who is Terrence, man? I know you, but tell folks kind of, you know, who who you are, man. Okay, I'm Terrence Brownlee, uh, 24 years old. Okay. Uh, a father. Okay. A, okay. A new yeah. father. A new father. Yes. My man. Yes. Uh, born and raised in Annapolis, Maryland. Okay. Um, actually grew up in Bywaters. Okay. 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 Um, went to Annapolis High School, then okay. later transferred to Old Mill High School. Okay. I, uh, at Old Mill High School, won a state championship. Okay. Football, right? Football. Football. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. And then... Went off to college, played for Towson University. Okay. Um, 2016 came and graduated with a political science degree. Very good, man. Very good. Very good. Afterwards, you know, I uh, was looking for employment, and now I'm working at the Phoenix Academy. Okay. All right. Awesome, man. So I said Phoenix Center. It's best to call it the Phoenix Academy. Uh, So I think that it was called the Phoenix Center. Okay. Uh, before they moved into the new building, okay. uh, which is now the old Germantown. Right, 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 right. Okay, okay. So on a day-to-day basis, kind of folks hear about the Phoenix Center um, or Phoenix Academy. Um, what are you actually doing there? Just kind of just touch on it just a little bit, because what you're doing is, is, is great work, man. Everybody can go over there and work and have the patience and what it takes to work with our young people. Right, so my position on paper is a crisis interventionist. Okay. okay. Uh, What that entails is um, me going into classrooms and interacting with students and uh, trying to prevent crisis. And so I'm, you know, doing a class change. I'm in the hallways trying to see what's going on. Maybe I can prevent an issue before it sprouts because it's it's always a tons of issues. For sure, for sure. But you're kind of... Uh, as well, like an in-house mentor. I know a lot of these young boys and girls actually look look up to you uh, and respect you because of who you are and knowing that you came from Bywaters and watched you kind of rise up, which I think is awesome. Yes. Man. So um, you, you threw something out. I want to go back to it a little bit. So you say you're a new father. Yes. Come on, man. I mean, boy, girl, you know, what's a, it like being a new dad? A girl. Okay. Um, it's awesome. Okay. Every You know, since I... Saw my young lady uh, um, come out. Um, it's just been a wonderful experience. It's life changing. Right? It is. It is life changing. I had to get a lot of different things in order yeah. and take a and, and take a whole new perspective yeah. on life yeah. uh, when bringing a daughter into this right. world and having to um, take care of someone. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Finances yeah. is a huge part of right. it, right. and. So just making sure everything was in order for okay. my daughter. Okay. So you know, I'm, I'm a, I got a few years on you. My my my, my babies are grown, right. grown and gone. 23 years, 22 years old. Um, I can't imagine what it's like being a young male now, bringing a new child into this ugly world right now. Do you have concerns, or you wow. guys like? I know me, man. I would probably be like ready for homeschool and security details, and you know what I mean. I know right, I'm with right, my baby right. now, 22. Right. What are you feeling or experiencing right now, bringing a young? Um, well, knowing all of the, you know, the ongoing troubles yeah, and issues yeah, in, in today's yeah. society, I immediately before she was born, you know, I'm thinking about location and where we should live yeah, and you know yeah. schooling and whether or not the homeschool but then you think about homeschool and then yeah. you think about the, the cons of that you yeah, know and, and social, the social yeah, issues yeah. and her not having a social life right. so you don't want to be overbearing Are you right? but you want to make sure that you can you know do what I do crisis mm-hmm. intervention mm-hmm. you know I want to mm-hmm. make sure that I can mm-hmm. you know provide the best life for her right. and make sure she's comfortable and make sure our family is okay. okay okay now I know since you you know I'm, I'm gonna try I'm listening to what you're saying man I really want to keep this thing real so um, you graduated from school but now mm-hmm. you back in school I that's am. what you're doing now I what are you back in school um, I'm currently at University of Maryland University College okay. uh, for my master's in cybersecurity and technology okay and what are you playing why are you doing that why are you what's your what's your end game um, 
<clears throat> I would like to start off by uh, starting my career working down there with you guys. Oh, the county. oh, oh you're looking for the county job. <laughs> yeah, okay. man. I, I, okay. A few years ago, I interned down there when I was doing my little political science you sure thing. Did. You sure did. I loved it. I loved the people in okay. there. I loved the atmosphere. Okay. Um, and so I'd, I'd, I'd love to come back uh, okay. when I got done. Awesome, man. We'll talk about that offset and okay. see what we can do. Right. So listen, the next question I have for you, man, again, we keep this real on Real Talk. What do you see as a young black male now, as a new father, growing up in Annapolis from mm -hmm. Bywaters, um, going to school, back in school now, trying to do your career thing? What do you see right now that's negatively impacting our young people? Oh, man. You know, why do we need a Phoenix Academy? What's happening right now in the community? What are you seeing? Um, I feel like technology Okay. Is being used incorrectly. Okay. Uh, tell me, tell me, tell me what you so, mean by that. Social media. Okay. And another thing is, in our communities, the 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 the, the people who are the leaders in our community, okay. you know, the role models to the youth. Okay. Um, I don't feel like we are leading in the right direction. Okay. And me myself, I haven't been able to get back into the communities. I feel like I'm doing my part by serving at the school. Okay, which is awesome. Um, yeah. But in the communities, you know, uh, just growing up, everybody looks up to, you know, the guys who are on the corners yeah. and those yeah. guys because yeah. a lot of people don't have fathers. Right. And, you know, a lot of mothers don't have money. And so, of course, you, you, you look for some love. Okay. And if, you know, if I, young men, and women in the community who are in leadership roles mm -hmm. stepped up to the plate okay. and wanted to create change for our communities, then I feel like, you know, it, it would happen. Okay. You know, I feel like we are waiting for some other entity or yeah. somebody else to come in and, and, and say, here's a sweep and sweep up all that mess. Okay. But that's not going to happen. We have to, we have to react. Okay, so man, you, that was well said. So what you're saying, based my next question was going to be, what are some things that adults in the community could do? And it really sounds like you, what you're saying, and you can add to this is, we we need to do more and stop thinking that the government or somebody else is going to do it for us. So what are the, some of the things that uh, adults in the community could do, in, in your opinion? You know, what, what do you? What are some other things they can do? Um, first of all, we stop the violence. Okay. Uh, breaking laws and breaking rules that needs to cease. Um, drug selling and, 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 and that culture it mm -hmm. needs to leave. Okay. That's I know it's 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 primary income for a lot of families, mm -hmm. but somehow we have to uh, go out here and get trades or go mm -hmm. back to school mm -hmm. and do something and introduce something else to our community right. other than drug selling. Right, I got you. Okay. So we, we, we have to combat that. And then, what was your question again? <laughs> what are some things that, that more uh, community folks, you identified leaders, right? right? But everybody has a role to play. And right. I was just trying to get you to paint a picture for me so folks know that everybody can make a difference. Okay. You know, just what are some of the things. But you, you, you nailed it, you nailed it. Let me hit you with this next one. So. Um, you sound like you've, you've done well, um, and I know under the guidance of, of, of parents and guiding you through the sports thing, and right. I know your moms don't play. No, we no, we we, no. we right here on the record yeah. right now, right? right? Miss Erica Matthews don't play, <laughs> right? No, she, no. she, you were raised well. But what are some of those other additional things that drove you to where you are? Because now you have a young baby, right? so that's now going to become your why. That's going to become what drives you from mm -hmm. this point. But what drove you, what you went to Towson, you played mm -hmm. sports, you graduated, you went back to school, right? And mm -hmm. you're saying you got a vision to maybe work for the county. Right. What was that drive? Where did that come from? Oh, man. So I think it came from just being hungry mm. and, and, and growing up <clears throat> in a certain situation that I knew that I didn't want for my family in the future. Come on, man. That's so I was, there you go. I was so hungry. Uh -huh. and, and wanted better for my life. I always envisioned putting my mother in the house. Right. And, 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 and I'm going to make that come true. And I knew that it took hard work. Right. And uh -huh. football, uh, I use that as, as a, a tool. Okay. okay. You know, it, 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 
with, with playing football, mm -hmm. I had to make sure that my grades were right because I knew I wanted to go to college or there potentially, you, you know, as a kid, you wanted to be yeah. in the NFL. Make so. sure the young people heard that again. Your what was right? My grades. Your grades. Yes. Yeah. We need to understand that education is important. Go ahead. I don't want to cut you off. Okay. Yeah. So my grades, I had to make sure they were correct. I had to make sure that I was working hard on the football field and practice and off the field yeah. with training. Yeah. Um, all of those things um, come into effect because, mm -hmm. like I said, you know, I wanted to be an NFL player. And I knew that in order to get to the NFL, I had to play college ball. Okay, the okay, only way for me to get to college is to maintain a, a good GPA, right. maintain my grades, right. have good ACT, SAT scores. Football was secondary. There you go. And so after I did that, and I was in college, now I'm playing football, and I'm like, okay, I made it here. Okay. Now let's, let's finish off. Let's finish off. And so football guided me through it because I feel like that goal, mm -hmm. if I hadn't had that goal, that's why it's always good to have goals. If I hadn't had that goal, then maybe I, I, I wouldn't know where I would be. Okay. okay. Because, you know, it shot me up. Okay. That's awesome, man. And, and you know, I like the way you said you were hungry. You know, I know when I'm out here pounding the pavements with young folks and adults as well, mm -hmm. right? I'm saying a lot of times people say they're hungry. They say they want something. You know, everybody wants what the beast get, right? right. But don't nobody want to put in the beast work, no. right? And I know you a hustler, man. I know you. I know when you set your mind on something, you get it done. So let me here, here's one for you. So, um, what would you tell the folks that are watching? Um, where are some places or maybe a vehicle that kids or young people in the community um, can go to use as a vehicle to get to the next level? You know, I, I, for example, back in the day, we had the basketball courts where everybody was actively engaged. A lot mm -hmm. of that stuff is gone now. But outside of sports and athletics, there are some things that young people can gravitate to. Do you, mm -hmm. you want to share what um, you think some of those vehicles might be? We, we, we need to take advantage of a lot of the um, Anne Arundel County Public School Systems uh, programs. Mm -hmm. I know at the Phoenix Academy, we have, we have the agricultural program, okay. which is like, uh, if, you, if you shoot down there, you'll see like the farm and the yeah, animals. Yeah, yeah. And so we, they're, they're teaching these students how to grow their own foods, okay. how to farm and, okay. and, and, and do everything outside. Okay. Uh, get into digital arts. We have a digital arts hey, program yeah. also. Yeah, That's yeah. huge. Yeah. Um, so instead of playing the game, Make right, em. know how to make them. We that's make what em. I'm talking about. And, and, that's, and that's where the big bucks is. Okay. And also, like uh, with Cat South, Cat North, yeah. you know, all yeah. of those programs get Shout a trade. Out to Cat South. That's yes. Miss Matthews. Yes, yeah. she is. Yeah. Yeah. And so, all of those great programs, I, I don't feel like um, when I talk to students at my school, yeah. either they, they haven't been informed on them. Yeah. Yeah. Or they, you know, they're just not too interested in it because they, they've never been shown that. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if it's because they haven't been there to see it yeah. or they haven't seen the product of, you know, results of that product. But okay. we have to, we have to promote those okay. and okay. have those be some driving facts. So before we wrap up, so we mentioned some things going on at the Phoenix Academy. We mentioned Cat South. That's for the kids that are actually in school. Right. How about for the ones that either are not in school because they finish? When they're not in school, because they're not in school. Mm. Okay. I mean, what can, what can we, you know? I'm, I'm thinking we should all focus on ourselves and, okay. and see where we are in life and see what we like to do as people. Okay. Because that's number one. You don't want to do, you're not going to go and do something that you don't want to do. Sure. So, I mean, if, if, if you know you can't go back to school and you don't want to get a college degree, Okay, then let's go find a trade. Mm -hmm. We got tons of them. HVAC, plumbing, mm -hmm. carpentry. Culinary. Culinary. I mean, it's tons yeah, of them. Yeah. And we could go do that. I think there's uh, the job corps up in mm -hmm. law. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. depending on you, you know, right. the, the process can take up to a month or eight months, right. you know. So, so they got to be hungry. You, you got to be gotta hungry. They got to want to eat. You got to want to eat. Right, I got you. And, and, Okay, let me, let me hit you with this one, champ, and then we're going to wrap up. So okay. um, you're a new parent, right? right. Um, and, and you're a product, obviously, of good parents. But for the parents that are watching, you working at the Phoenix Academy, what might be something that you would throw out as advice? We never want to tell people what to do, but what would you throw out to the parents listening? What can they do 
uh, in respect to dealing with their young people, maybe mm -hmm. they can do better? Uh, first off, mm -hmm. we need to lead by example. Okay. Um, our children, they see everything that we do. Yeah. And much of the behavior is learned behavior. Mm. And so in order to change, you know, the culture of these students, we have to act right ourselves. Mm, man, boy, you saying something right there. And that's the biggest one to me. Okay, okay. Because I feel like if, if, if I want you to change right. and I'm not showing you mm. which way to go mm -hmm. and I'm just speaking out, telling you don't cuss, but on the back end I'm cursing. Mm. Wow. Wow. Then you stuck. Yeah. You know, you're like, what yeah. am I supposed to do? Right, right, right. And so we, as parents, we have to lead by example. Okay. And, and we have to constantly push our children um, to be successful. Okay. We have to introduce them. And one thing that I, I, I appreciate my mother um, for doing is, even though we didn't have a lot of money or anything, she wanted to make sure we were exposed to everything. That's good. That's good. So she, she did well. She did. She did well. You know, uh, everywhere. Not right. so that we had a bigger mind, bigger than Annapolis. Okay. And okay. so we exposure is key. Okay. And leading by example. Okay. All right, champ, man. It's been a blessing. Been Thank a blessing. you. I always love chatting with I you. I appreciate man. it. It's been so a pleasure. Sit tight for a second, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back with more real talk just after these commercial breaks. Thank you. is an adventure full of special moments. A cruise! Right. Unexpected moments. I got this. And even awkward moments. Okay, Dad, thank you. <laughs> but every moment you spend with your kids, <laughs> even the smallest moments, <laughs> can make the biggest impact on your child's life. So take a moment to be a dad today. <laughs> Welcome back to this episode of Real Talk, and I hope you've enjoyed this episode thus far. Words of inspiration today. As you well know, most of you should know, I'm the son of a pastor who was also the daughter of a pastor, and it was always instilled in me that it's easy to have faith if everything is going the way it should, and if everything is in fact working out. But it's much harder to have faith when we're facing challenges in our life work, church, or community. But that is exactly what you need in respect to applying your faith. Now let me be very clear here. It doesn't matter to me what you believed in. Just know that something outside of your human power drives the universe. Because faith is believing in that thing that's unseen. Faith is taking that first step Faith is jumping into the deep water, knowing that everything will be okay. It's easy to be positive when everything is working out. It's much harder, I mean much, much harder, when nothing is working out. But that's when you need it most. Everyone has something worth fighting for. Everything worth a fight requires some real fighting to achieve it. People right now in this time of day, right now, the young people and our communities need us all to come together and fight for the common good. The very thought of our babies not being safe now in school is beyond words for me right now. The fact that they are falling victim to human and sex trafficking at such young age is actually sickening. If you want to see things get any better, we can't quit this game at halftime, i.e. summer break. We can't afford to quit mid-season during the holiday season is what I'm talking about. We must play the whole game and if necessary, go into overtime if we need to. We need to fight during the preseason, people, through the cold, through the darkness, and through all the challenges, including the naysayers, including politics and any opposition that comes our way in order to make our young people and our communities the desired trophy that we all would like to see. Yes, you're gonna be knocked down, but you must get up, keep fighting, dig deep inside yourself, and discover your true strength in working together 
and for all of us to become united. We will find that's when we will find the real peace and inclusion within the communities and among our families. Moving to the next level in the same direction. So I ask you, I want you right now as to watch me, as you're watching me, I want you to set some long-term goals and say to yourself, I know what I need will come my way. Long-term, I may know if I keep it, I will be rewarded. Long-term, if I know I stay consistent, it'll pay off. Long-term, I know all my actions and all my discipline and all my integrity will pay off in a big way. I must not give up. Setbacks are, aren't always negative. Sometimes they're sent to guide us in a direction to become bigger things in a better direction. But you can only see that if you show true character during those hard times. If you remain open-minded to those hard times, if you show strength through your struggles, you can do it, whatever it is. Don't say, why me? Ask, how come? Or what if, what can I get out of this and become stronger? What can I learn from this experience? In the hard times, we see who really has the true character. In the hard times, we see what people are really made of, including ourselves. What are you made of? Tell me, what are you made of? Look at the TV right now and answer me. I'm going to ask you again, what are you made of? Character, community expansion, growth, pride. That growth and pride needs to come from you digging deep. Find that strength that lives inside of you. Find that light, that fire in others who follow your lead. Trust that if you keep doing your thing, you will be rewarded and others will follow. It might not happen right away. It really does but will appear if you just keep going. Don't allow regret to enter your life at any time. Don't you dare look back on your life in five years and say, wow, I could have done more. If only I had stuck it out. If only I had been much in a better position. No, look back with pride. Look back and be able to say to yourself, it wasn't easy but I'm so proud I stuck it out because I got my reward. Make sure your story is one of strength. Make sure your story is one from someone who refused to give up no matter what. Refuse to settle. Refuse to be normal. Just keep going. Your future self is beginning in you. And you must live to be the best that you can be and make this to continue to be the best county in the state of Maryland. That wraps up this week's episode of Real Talk with your host, myself, Derek Matthews. You can watch this episode and archive episodes of this show online at any time on our Facebook or YouTube by searching for Arundel TV Please tune in again next week for more highlights and news from around the county. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. We appreciate you.